Hello everyone, I'm Ajit Khan and in this tutorial we are going to see how to take backup of last access data and restore it back. For this tutorial I've created a blog post on which I have written all this set of commands and instruction to follow. So you can uh, go through this blog as well after this after watching this tutorial. So to take, uh, uh, first of all, we are going to see how to install Elasticsearch. So if you are on Mac OS, then you can use Brew Update and then install Java and then search for the Elasticsearch version. So searching for Elasticsearch version will give you all the available versions. So here you can see 2.4 is also available, 1.7 is also available and the green tick here shows that it's already being installed on my system. So uh, you can install the specific version you want. So I have, I have already installed Brew install, one, uh, home Brew version 1.7. And uh, you can check if Elasticsearch is installed or not with the command Brew info Elasticsearch. This will give you the information regarding your data directory, your log directory, your plugins directory and so on. It will also give you the command to start Elasticsearch. So you can start it with Brew services start Elasticsearch or you can directly start with Elasticsearch so but this won't put it behind the uh, it won't put it as a daemon process so it's up to you how you start it so in my case it's already running okay. so let's move ahead so first of all before taking the data backup we are going to create some documents and uh, the very first thing we are going to do is create a document with, the, uh, with index. So certain terminology being used here is um, name index is the name of our index and name is the group of our document. So we are going to uh, store certain information like name and email address and we are grouping these information under a similar group which is names. My ID will be the uh, particular ID for the particular record and uh, pretty is um, pretty means that we are asking Elasticsearch to give us the output in a well formatted manner. So let's go ahead. So uh, I'll be using Postman to, uh, to interact with Elasticsearch although you can use curl command on your terminal to interact with uh, Elasticsearch. So let's uh, Let's see if there is some data or not. Yeah, so there is already some data. Let's uh, delete this and we'll create fresh data. So uh, there is no data in this. Now we can create one. With ID one. And uh, the, so we are going to create the name uh, name as a sheet, email address is a sheet at example.com. The ID is going to be one, the group is names and the index is name index. Let's create this. Okay, so it has been created. Let's try the get request again. Okay, so we have our first record. So we have created our first record. You can see the images here as well uh, for the tutorial. So this record was with uh, when you specified the ID. You can also create record without specifying the ID. So if, uh, let's try one more without specifying any id and in body change this name without id without id let's save this so here as you can see it has already automatically generated an id for it 
So if you specify an ID, it will take that ID and if you don't specify one, then it will create automatically. Okay, so we have created two record. Uh, now that's uh, enough for to take backup and restore it back. Uh, let's start the backup process now. So for backup, you need to have two repository, logical and physical. So physical repository is where you are going to store your uh, actual Elasticsearch data. So you can create one. I have given it the name EIS underscore backup. I already have it and there's nothing inside it. So uh, you can name it like anything you want to. And then you need to tell Elasticsearch that the uh, path of your repository is where. So in the configuration file Elasticsearch.yml you can specify this setting. So here I have specified the actual path of AS backup directory. Um, here the path is user, local, seller and so on uh, but in other OS like Ubuntu it could be slash etc slash elasticsearch slash elasticsearch.yml so depending on your OS the configuration uh, file could be on some other path so uh, specify the path dot repo and then save and exit and then check if uh, there, are, uh, there are some uh, snapshot is already present or then not so yeah, let's fire the snapshot API. Okay, so right now there is no snapshot. Now uh, the snapshot can be taken for the for uh, a particular index or a few number of indices or for the whole cluster so it's up to us uh, for uh, what uh, what data we want to take backup so if you want to ba backup particular index then you can specify the index or uh, if you don't specify anything you can take the backup of the whole cluster so yeah, now we are going to create some logical repository and uh, uh, we will take the snapshot of our index name index which we have created just now so just in case if you have not restarted your Elasticsearch to take the configuration uh, change uh, so just restart it so that it can take path.repo now we are going to uh, we are going to create the snapshot and uh, this is going to be our logical repository and uh, we are going to name it with name index backup so you can name it like anything so request and the data is yes. here we are going to specify certain settings for this repository that it is a file system type is fs you can uh, fs meaning we are going to store the data we are going to take the backup of the data on uh, on the local disk itself and you can have uh, you can store the backup to S3 as well. So here type could be S3 as well So here we are going to have it on the local disk. So type is FS now uh, other settings are location so uh, we are going to say that we want uh, name index and uh, We want a uh, so we have our parent directory name named as es backup and so location is going to create another another directory named name index inside es backup and it is going to be re relative to our parent directory as we have already specified that path in uh, path dot repo in elasticsearch.yml compressed true means the data it is going to take backup is going to be compressed so uh, let's go ahead and create it 
so it has created it so if you fire a search query for the snapshot then uh, you can you can get the details that we have uh, successfully created it this will create the logical repository uh, that you can check in our es backup directory so it must have created it here it is so inside name index nothing is there okay now we are actually going to take the backup so to take backup we have the api underscore snapshot name index backup and the snapshot name so yeah you can name it like anything so let's give the snapshot name as some date say it's 20th number 2016 let's copy the details data so it's going to get a request the body okay so here uh, in the indices setting you are going to specify the index for which you are going to take backup so here the index is name index uh, you can specify multiple indexes here as well with the comma separated value a list of indexes you can specify here and if you don't specify this setting it is going to take the backup of all the available indexes uh, of the whole cluster and uh, ignore available means suppose uh, if there are four shards and uh, one or two shards are missing then uh, it it should ignore those shards and continue the backup process if you set it to false then it is going to uh, hamper our backup process so uh, we are going to say with ignore available true that just ignore any shards if it is not available and continue the backup process with the existing one the include global state means that uh, uh, that whether you want to have the status of the cluster uh, should also be backed up or not so if we have specified false that means that uh, the state of the cluster is not going to be inside the backup so suppose if we make it true and if the state of the cluster is yellow during backup and if we restore it then the new cluster will also have the status yellow okay so now uh, we are good to go let's take the backup so it is it is saying that it has been accepted and let's see if it has created anything inside our name index or not okay so it has created the snapshot so the snapshot is the name which we have given so index is the some metadata Okay, so we have successfully taken the snapshot and uh, we can fire a, a get query as well on the same to take up the so let's put a get query so it is going to give the detail that the snapshot name is this version is this elastic search version is this indices that we have uh, backed up is name index state is success so if it is a long running backup then uh, you can check the status here and so on so you can check all the status here now uh, we have successfully taken the snapshot now we are going to restore it back so before restoring uh, we are uh, we will be deleting the current data So um, our data was with name index. So we have two records here. Let's delete those. Let's 
so you can see if it has been deleted or not okay so we don't have any data now now we'll try to restore it To restore it, uh, we'll be uh, firing a post request with the snapshot API and the name of the uh, logical repository and the snapshot that we want to restore. So you can have incremental snapshot like uh, for the very first one we have given the name 12 November 16 and suppose there is another snapshot running on uh, 13 November 16 and so it is going to be an incremental backup so the very first backup will have uh, the backup of all your data and the next backup will have the backup of only the uh, difference between those two so it is going to store the delta but not the complete backup so but the very first one will have the complete backup so this is a great thing so you can specify the particular snapshot that you want to restore So let's try to restore it. Here, the name of our snapshot is twenty November sixteen. It's going to be a post request. has been accepted let's see if our data has been restored or not so let's fire a get query and here's our data so we have successfully restored from a particular snapshot so we have successfully restored our Elasticsearch data and um, we can uh, uh, during restore you can also provide certain information like we have seen indices you can also rename the indices here as well so all the indices you want to restore so so if you have taken a uh, backup of four index and you want only the backup of two index then you can specify the those indexes here uh, ignore available means the same which we have discussed and you can rename here as well and you can uh, give the pattern so this is how you can also provide certain data to the restore API and if you don't provide anything that it is going to be it is going to restore it the default way which we have seen just now. So that's all for this tutorial hope you like it and you learn from it. So if you want any uh, commands or if you have any doubts you can uh, ask in the comment box. Thanks for watching.